Uh, good example once again. Um, we just saw um, what are quadrants and uh, how to use quadrants. What can quadrants actually uh, let us uh, <clears throat> find? So let us now look at um, uh, another uh, sampling unit that's a uh, plotless sampling unit. Um, specifically, we're going to look at transects. So, uh, <clears throat> Uh, transects are basically um, uh, basically you can see a line uh, where uh, or basically we can see a path where we can uh, walk and see towards left and right and note down the species that we are interested in um, transit can be in the form of line uh, where we can walk on that line walk on that path walk on that road um, not necessarily the transit can always be line, but transit can also be point. So we call it uh, point transit. So basically, we go, we try to uh, locate those points that we have laid out, and go to that point and stand on that point and uh, do uh, survey from uh, that point. So that's point transit. So we're going to look at uh, line transit as well as um, point transit, but more into line transit. Uh, basically, uh, transit was uh, invented for studying uh, plant ecology, but now it is famously used for uh, animal uh, uh, ecologists. So, uh, animal ecology. So, uh, it's used. Uh, uh, it's useful for animal that uh, moves uh, uh, little or that moves uh, uh, slowly. And uh, not slowly, but uh, that can move, but uh, uh, that moves uh, little, not uh, uh, very much during the daytime or during the nighttime. So, but even if uh, we are to uh, study animals which are moving quite fast, which are moving uh, more, we can use transics, but. Uh, those animals can be located before those animals can be located or can be able to uh, study before they move so the main thing is that uh, uh, the transit can be used for those animals which move little or those animal move which moves few uh, and uh, can also be used for those animals which can move a lot but we can capture them before they move so i really hope that you understood that understood this one um, uh, line uh, transit sampling or uh, uh, simply say the transit sampling is not only uh, useful for the general kind of animals but it's very useful for uh, a very uh, rare uh, a very mobile very difficult to detect animals again and uh, it's a very good method to estimate the abundance of these kind of animals which are rare, cryptic, which uh, are very uh, mobile and which are very difficult to detect. But also, again, it can be used for uh, detecting uh, uh, plants which are very difficult to detect, uh, very rare to detect, and uh, even uh, it can be used uh, in areas where we have got uh, uh, transitions like intertidal uh, organisms like a uh, transition of forest like uh, we have got transition of forest from one foot to broadleaf we can study uh, through uh, transit if we have to study both um, disturbing and disturbed patterns of uh, the vegetation or uh, uh, any patterns that we want to study between these two groups of uh, study area we can do that by transit if you want to uh, study uh, the diversity of uh, plants and animals through altitudinal gradient from the lowest to the highest transit can be laid out, laid out from the lowest ground to the highest ground and we can see the variation of the the uh, altitude on the diversity of plants and animals so that kind of uh, uh, that kind of transformed vegetation that that kind of uh, that kind of uh, area we have got where we have got inter uh, vegetation where we have got different altitudinal gradient, different climatic patterns, different 
disability pattern can be uh, studied by um, Trazic. Uh, another example can be uh, changes in uh, vegetation from uh, wetland to dryland can be done by uh, the use of Trazic, which is which can be laid out laid from um, wetland to uh, the dryland or the wetland to terrestrial land. Sometimes it's also called as uh, distance uh, sampling because um, Trazic not only restrict itself to the line only, but it can also be uh, used for counting animals which we can see from distance from the Trazic line. So that's also known by the name called distance sampling. But basic idea is that um, the basic idea is that uh, we uh, should have a line on where we can walk and uh, we should be able to see left and right of those animals and those animals which are detected from the uh, transit can be noted down and diversity distribution and abundance as well as density can be found out from the use of uh, transit and we can traverse or we can travel on the line of transit through uh, foot uh, through vehicle on the horse and even on airplanes uh, even uh, if you have to go on boat and if you want to see left and right uh, vegetation or left and right uh, faunal diversity we can do that and boat can be also one way to or one means to um, traverse the transit so um, that's all uh, um, on the overview of uh, transit so just know that it's not only useful for rare plants but also can be used for detecting rare animals not only for uh, detecting very little moving animals but also can be used for detecting uh, animals which moves very fast but we should be able to capture the uh, the animals before they uh, move um, the main thing that we need to uh, uh, the main thing that we need to uh, uh, consider when we are uh, studying transic is that the uh, the detection function. So uh, how can we detect animals? How can we detect plants? The detection function is very important to keep in our mind. If we have to study density of the individuals by transit method we have to uh, note down three important information one is um, distance uh, of the sighting uh, the second one is the sighting angle and third one is perpendicular distance from the transit so let's say um, uh, when we are uh, using transit uh, how can we get this three information let's say we have seen this animal from the transit line this is the transit line here we have and let's say we have we are here uh, let's say we are here and uh, we're looking at this one from here from this transit uh, when we are looking from transit to this animal we have to uh, collect three information first one is the yes basically you need to collect the information of about this animal the first information that we need to collect is the distance of this one. So this is R, RI, sighting distance. Second one that we need to uh, collect is the angle. So this is theta. And the third one that we need to collect is the perpendicular distance from the, the transit line. So this is uh, given by Xi. So I hope you uh, uh, got something else from this one. Uh, three things that we need to uh, uh, consider collecting the data or cal consider collecting the information from the transit sampling is that um, while walking if you have seen towards the right one animal immediately try to uh, 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 try to uh, estimate the uh, sighting distance from the transit point that we uh, are standing so that's R and secondly you try to note down the angle to that animal uh, from the uh, comparing with the transit line and that's theta and thirdly uh, try to note down the perpendicular distance so uh, as long as you have uh, 
as long as you have got uh, 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 distance from uh, the transit to the animal that's the hypotenuse and uh, the angle that you have and this is basically right angle that we need to find out so uh, perpendicular can be find, found out from the Pythagoras theorem so uh, 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 when we have got perpendicular when we have got hypotenuse the uh, longer side of the right angle and when we have got the angle then uh, <clears throat> we can basically use the theory of right angle triangle so uh, sine theta is equal to uh, perpendicular divided by hypotenuse so from there we can basically see that uh, perpendicular is somewhere here and when we know the setting distance and when we know the uh, setting angle we should be knowing the perpendicular that's a perpendicular distance from the animal to the transit so we will be getting on that one uh, in next slide also but before that i just wanted to uh, show that uh, we are uh, let's say we are walking from this line uh, to uh, the other side of the line that, that's our transit so when we are uh, walking we are able to see 13 uh, uh, animals let's see so the one two three uh sorry this is one two three four uh the line uh the the animals or the points that are touching the transic we should consider them because we are obvious that we are seeing right on the transic so we i'm just counting four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and thirteen so uh we have 13 sightings from this transit so 13 is the number and uh, when we have a sighting distance when we have got a sighting angle and when we have got perpendicular distance um, after sighting 13 numbers of uh, animals from the transit we can basically calculate the density of the that animal uh, from this method so we'll be again looking on that one slightly after uh, one or two slides before calculating the density of animals uh, uh, let's say that uh, we just uh, saw 13 uh, sightings from uh, that transit. Let's say the transit was 10 kilometers that we walked from one point to another point. It was 10 kilometers. And before calculating the distance, uh, density from uh, the 10 kilometer transit, sighting 13, um, uh, 13 species, uh, 13 numbers of that species, we need to consider four uh, assumptions. First one is that uh, these assumptions have to be true if you have to calculate the dis density from the transect method. First assumption is that animals directly on the transect line will never be missed. So the detection function is 1. So w right on the transect line, if you see an animal, we have to count 1. So that's obvious. So that assumption is alright. So that assumption we need to uh, take care of. Second one is animals are fixed at the initial sighting position. They do not move before being detected and known are counted twice. So uh, animals, they do not, uh, because they are in nature, so they do not immediately see us, but we should be immediately seeing them. And before they see us and run away, we should be seeing them and we should be counting them. And uh, uh, generally speaking, uh, there should be less possibility to uh, again count that uh, same species twice so uh, that's the second assumption that we need to make distances and angles are measured exactly with no measurement error and no rounding errors so that uh, distance and angle can be measured sightings of uh, individual animals are independent events and uh, uh, if you have got these four assumptions right then uh, uh, we can calculate the density of the animal uh, from that from uh, in that area by this method so density is equal to uh, number of individuals that we cited let's see number of individuals that we cited from this from this method was 13 so 13 divided by 2 into l is total length of transit so 2 into 10 is uh, uh, the length of the transit 10 kilometers and is uh, uh, constant so uh, basically uh, a has uh, different values uh, 
depending on depending upon the strip that we have used uh, for walking the transit. But let's say right now the value of E, which is constant, is one. Let's see. But you need to check that value of E when you are looking at uh, your study. So uh, it may differ from uh, study to study. It may be differing based on the width of the strip that you must have taken into account. But let's say that the constant A, I'm just taking 1. So uh, basically, I'm just getting 13 divided by uh, 20. So just calculate this one and you should be getting uh, that much animals per kilometer. So uh, that's the density of uh, any, uh, that animal. Uh, so this is what uh, uh, one of the uh, assumption uh, tells us. So we should be able to uh, calculate exactly um, uh, habitudinous. We should be able to calculate habitudinous means the distance between us and the, the animal sighted or the plants and animal sighted. And the angle should be uh, able to calculate. So the transit line and the angle that is being made after the sighting of that animal and perpendicular distance should be able to calculate from uh, that sighting. So basically um, uh, when we have got uh, habitudinous and angle we can basically use sine uh, sine theta is equal to um, r which is perpendicular by uh, habitudinous which is x. So, uh, so r is basically um, uh, R is basically, uh, or we are not finding R, sorry. So we are finding basically, um, we are finding basically uh, X. So uh, X is uh, basically um, R into sine theta. So that's what we are getting over here. So we basically using right angled uh, triangle formula from Pythagoras theorem. So. Um, I really hope that you got something else from here. Uh, so that's how we calculate uh, the density of uh, that animals from uh, uh, the transit method. So you can do lots of things from transit method and you can use the perpendicular distance, the sighting distance, the angle to see more uh, other <coughs> um, parameters from the transit line. Please try to uh, explore yourself on this one. But basic thing is that Transit can be used for estimating estimating uh, abundance and density, which we saw from d is equal to uh, n divided by 2 l a. Um, how to lay out um, how to lay out transit? So, uh, if we are laying out transit in a web uh, fashion, if you are laying out a transit in a fashion where it's just uh, we are laying out like this basically this transic and this transic may be counting the same plants or animal this may be counting the same plant and animal over here counting the same plant and animal over here so intersection is not good because uh, those plants and animals which are being cited by uh, this transic over here may be also being cited by this transic so uh, which are being cited by this here may be cited by this one so it's i think uh, the intersection may cause our uh, result to be biased so in order to avoid that one what we need to uh, always look at is we need to uh, uh, lay out our transits in perpendicular to each other so uh, uh, most commonly if you have uh, more than two transits uh, it's recommended to lay down the transits in uh, an equidistance uh, fashion so parallel and equidistance fashion so parallel so lay out your transits in parallel and this gap depends on cities to cities from uh, species to species so try to uh, know this gap so from literature TV you should be finding out based on what kind of species that you are going to do your thesis or dissertation or research on the gap between the uh, distance between two transects may also be differing. So, but the main thing is that you need to uh, consider the parallel uh, fashion of the uh, transect layout. The second uh, special consideration that you need to uh, lay out is um, when we are looking at um, 
uh, when we're looking at uh, the special consideration that we need to uh, have when we are looking at transic is that when you're looking at the the transformation of vegetation when we're looking at the transformation in a structure of uh, that area when we're looking at uh, uh, inter regions let's say um, we have uh, on one part we have um, uh, uh, ocean or river on one part we have got shorelines but if you want to if the objective of your study is to see the changes in vegetation from the ocean to shoreline the laying out of transit link the transit in parallel to the shoreline will be quite foolish for you if you if your objective is to study the changes in vegetation from the ocean or the from river to the shoreline or to the uh, terrestrial area so logical thing to lay out transit is from shoreline to vegetation like this in parallel fashion and the number of transit that you need to lay out uh, is again dependent on the resources that you have the time the money uh, the resources other resources like labor that you have so if you have more time more labor try to uh, lay out more uh, transits more the precise um, so the main special consideration that you need to make is that if you are looking at uh, changes in diversity uh, along these two regions then the transit should be traversing from these two regions if you're looking at changes in vegetation from uh, conifer to uh, broadleaf forest the kind of the kind of transit that needs to traverse should be from the conifer to broadleaf so uh, not parallel to a broadleaf not parallel to conifer because it doesn't make any sense let's say that uh, there's uh, there's a jar full of candies so uh, the first uh, part of the jar is uh, let's say uh, full of um, uh, red candies second uh, part is full of uh, let's say uh, uh, brown candies and third let's say is full of uh, white candies so red brown and white and the analogy is that if you want to see the diversity of um, uh, candies white uh, red brown and white through transit method it's logical for you to lay out transit longitudinally because you get to see all the three layers of candies but if you're laying out your transit in a parallel fashion this transit may show only the red candies this transit may show only the brown candies this transit may show only the uh what was the candy um white candy so uh it's very logical for you to lay out transit in a logical fashion so when we are setting uh vegetation over the altitudinal gradient laying out the transit through altitudinal gradient is very important when we're looking at the changes in diversity between two kinds of forests laying out of transit through these two forests is very important when you're looking at the changes of vegetation from or uh, funnel of uh, flora diversity from wetland to dryland is very logical for you to uh, lay out your transit from wetland to dryland not just on wetland disturb to disturb similar thing altitude gradient similar thing so that's on how to lay out transit and the last thing that you need to remember uh, when you, you are laying out transit is that if you are laying out uh, transit with the help of like uh, mini uh, line uh, let's say this has this is having around like nine to ten lines. All the starting of the transit should be having same zero uh, points. It's not like one zero is starting over here, the another zero is here. So uh, randomly, it's zero here, zero here. All the zero or the, all the starting point or the beginning point should be same for all the transits. That's one. Um, the second one is that if you are uh, uh, using uh, uh, measuring tape uh, to lay out your transit so measuring tape you should basically have inches and uh, meters so uh, it's very important that you consider uh, one metric system for all the transits so if you're using this as uh, meter based uh, uh, meter based uh, tape then all the meter based tape should be facing upside 
it's not like this transic is having meter base tip facing us upside down this transic is having meter inch base uh transic facing upside so that's not going to be a good way to lay out transic and third thing is that you need to determine um at what regular interval that you are taking your transects on so uh, for example uh, are you keeping uh, the interval between the transects to uh, to the sampling because it's not like uh, uh, if you are to randomly walk and do the random collection of your data that's completely other thing but if you are uh, if you are uh, if you want to do the uh, collection of data collection of uh, sighting of animals on systematic basis meaning um, when you're walking the transit uh, when you're walking a transit uh, you want to stop at regular interval let's say uh, 10 meter 20 meter 30 meter 40 meter and wherever you have the points you stop there and you count the, your sighting so if you want to do with the systematic um, uh, regular intervals uh, points on the transects then you need to decide uh, what is the accurate interval that you need to uh, keep in order for you to accurately monitor that site so again that will be differing from the species to species that you're encountering uh, uh, so uh, try to see the lit uh, literature uh, and uh, try to uh, work it out the uh, kind of uh, the distance that you want to meet in between the two successive intervals so that's it on how to lay out uh, uh, transects and we'll be looking on uh, it more uh, in next slide how uh, in next uh, video presentation how to uh, combine uh, uh, transects with uh, quadrants in order to uh, cal collect the data more efficiently so uh, the main thing that you need to uh, uh, note from the line transit method is that uh, you need to you can lay after laying out the line line transit uh, there are two ways to uh, note down the data you can either walk the transit seeing left and right uh, collect the data collect the data even falling on the transit or uh, choose intervals uh, uh, distance from one point to another point and uh, collect the data from only from that uh, uh, every interval that you have chosen and uh, you can either choose to collect uh, data exactly falling on the line transit only that's known as point intercept which we'll be looking at in next video presentation or you may want to um, um, look at the data which are uh, which you find uh, from uh, uh, your transits not only on lying on the transit but from left and right uh, as far as where you can see as far as where we can note down the distance uh, note down the angle and note down the perpendicular distance from the transit so there are two ways to again collect the data so thank you so much